today we will be studying about the limiting structures of maxillary denture and this is the part one of this topic i am dr chaya pande your mentor before moving on to the maxilla particularly i want to clear it out here that our intraoral cavity have some landmarks that is we have to keep in mind before delivering any denture to the patient because these landmarks basically determine the success of our removal processes intraoral landmark is divided into four areas first one is supporting structure second is limiting structure third is relief area and the fourth one is stress bearing area let's start from limiting areas first these are the structures that limit the border of the maxillary denture that is they are limiting our denture and telling us not to extend the border beyond it suppose this colorful cast as a edentulous mouth of a patient we can appreciate these landmarks present in edentulous patient of course there are some exceptional patient also where we can't appreciate these landmarks clearly either due to resorption or excess of tissue or bone growth etc so there are seven limiting structures that we have to keep in mind first one is labial frenum second is labial sulcus third is buccal frenum fourth is buccal sulcus fifth is distal buccal space sixth amelar notch and seventh one is posterior parietal seal area from examination point of view posterior parietal seal area is most important topic let's see them one by one in detail so first we start with some elevations here 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 i think you all appreciate this elevations very well these are frenums this brown area this brown area all are frenum and next this in green these are depressions depressions means vestibular sulcus so this brown this brown area this are elevations known as frenum and this in green are depression known as vestibular sulcus so this frenum is toward lip so this is called as labial frenum and this frenum is toward cheek so these are called as buccal frenum these are also buccal frenum this depression is toward the lip so this is called as labial sulcus and this depression is toward the cheek so this is called as buccal sulcus okay this is also buccal sulcus labial means lips and buccal means cheek so what we learn depression is sulcus and elevations are frenum and we got labial frenum buccal frenum labial sulcus buccal sulcus now let's see these frenums and sulcus in some details from examination point of view labial frenum it appears as a fold of mucous membrane extending from mucous lining of the lip to the crest of residual ridge on the labial surface see this is labial frenum extending from mucous lining of the lip to the crest of alveolar ridge this is our residual alveolar ridge and this is the mucous lining of the lip here it goes down like a fan shape it may be single narrow or broad so here it's a single narrow or broad it can be narrow or it can be broad basically it's a fan shaped structure it may contain no muscle fiber of significance from examination point of view again there is no muscle attachment to the labial frenum it starts superiorly as a fan shape and converges as it descends to its terminal attachment on the labial side of the ridge see see this labial frenum is fan shaped as it goes down to the alveolar crest it converges and gives the structure like a fan now what is the significance of labial frenum relief should be given because overriding its function may cause pain and dislodgement of the denture here keep in mind whenever we deliver the denture to the patient this frenum should be relieved we have to give a proper clearance for the labial frenum otherwise it cause discomfort to the patient and also dislodge the denture during impression procedure the lip should be stretched horizontal outward for the proper recording of the frenum it's a method of how we record the labial frenum we have to just pull the upper lip of the patient outward and manipulate it so that the labial frenum get recorded in our impression if it is attached close to the crest phrenectomy is done many patient have this problem where we see the labial frenum are attached too close to the crest of alveolar ridge here it cause displace displacement of the denture so we have to do a phrenectomy it's a surgical removal of the frenum so we do phrenectomy after that we record the labial frenum in this diagram 
here the labial frenum get attached too close to the ridge and it can cause discomfort or dislodgement of the denture now the second one is labial sulcus it extend on both side of the midline from labial frenum anteriorly to the buccal frenum posteriorly it is bounded laterally by the labial mucosa and medially by the maxillary residual alveolar ridge see this depression in sulcus is known as labial sulcus here this yellow region this is a depression known as labial sulcus anteriorly it is bounded by the labial frenum posteriorly by the buccal frenum medially by the maxillary alveolar ridge and the laterally by the labial mucosa this is the significance of labial sulcus for effective border contact between denture and tissue vestibule should be completely filled with the impression material here for effective recording of the labial sulcus there should be sufficient amount of impression material filling this vestibule so that we get a proper contact of the denture border and the tissue now the third one is buccal frenum buccal frenum separates the labial and the buccal vestibule we will learn about this and remaining topic in detail in part second thank you if you find this video helpful do like it and don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel icon shadow let's talk dental